بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد Let's try to prepare this table for you which we'll look at inshallah in a few minutes after we finish with the sabaq um, the five words that we were going to um, look at today just prepared a quick table for you inshallah we'll, we'll look at this after we finish with the sabaq أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. So we're looking at آية 164. وما أنزل الله من السماء من ماء فأحيا به الأرض من بعد موتها. The fourth sign of Tawheed mentioned here, and that is the water which Allah Azza wa Jalla sends down through the clouds. So look at the nature of this water, the benefit of clouds. Allah Taala sends water through these clouds on areas of land where there are no rivers, there are no water streams. And tons of thousands of tons of water is lifted from the seas and canals and from rivers and streams, and then Allah Taala pours it over dry areas of line uh, of, of land, and no one other than Allah Azza wa has the the might and the power to do so. So even though the seventy percent of earth is water, thirty percent of dry land, the needs of that thirty percent of dry land. Is covered by, is met by the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal and His planning. So tons of water He lifts from 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 the watery areas, and then He descends. He causes it to descend, and He 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 allows it to rain down upon the dry areas of land. So this this irrigation system set by the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, this is the sign of. Allah Ta'ala's create the power of His creation, His creating power. So when this water is poured over dry areas of land, which appeared to be lifeless, after its death, there was drought, there was famine. And that, that piece of land which existed, but it, where, where the seeds were wasted, because they had no power to grow, they, had, they, they weren't growing anything. They were not able to grow any plants, any vegetation. But when Allah pours that water over it, then that same barren, dead area, lifeless uh, piece of land swings back to action. So, and it starts producing uh, vegetation. So Allah Azza wa gives life to that, uh, that, that, that piece of land after his death. And this is the creating power of the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. Well, and, then, and even that, that, that piece of land, that the variety of of the food of food and the variety of plants that 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 it then grows, the variety of color, the variety of taste, and it's a nourishment not only for mankind, but for but for the other creation of Allah Azza wa too. So the whole system, the way it does and how it does it, this is a sign of Allah Taala's creating power. And then on earth. Allah Azza wa has dispersed all types of creatures, moving creatures. So if you look at the amount of the different variety of species on earth, you'd be surprised and you'd be you'd be baffled. You'd be you'd, you'd be amazed. The scientists say there are about 8.7 million types of different species that occupy the same land, the, the earth where, where we are. And they say that this 8.77 million different types of species are only one fifth of all that which 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 we share the earth with 80 percent of species still lie undiscovered who has created these 8.7 million types of species and if as if the scientists their estimates are correct then you can times it by, by, by another five so almost 45 million Different types of species that 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 that, that, that occupy the earth. That is the creation of wabatha fiha min kulli dabba, and Allah Azza wa Jalla has created, has dispersed in it all types of creatures. Watasli fi riyah. None of these 8.7 million species that that we talked about, none of it is in the control of mankind. None of it is in control of human race. We didn't create a single of those 88.7 million species. In fact, the, the ulama, some some of us here, they have they, they talked about they say let alone creating any of these species, human beings don't even have control over themselves. Their own creation is in the hands of Allah Azza wa Jal. 
and their needs are met by the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. Their bodies is added to when, when they are when they come to life from a lifeless sperm, Allah Ta'ala creates them. And then from that lifeless sperm, Allah Ta'ala creates their flesh and their and their, their, their bones. And these flesh and this flesh and bones they continue to grow for a period of time where until the, the man reaches his prime youth. So until that, when he was not able to do anything to himself, Allah Ta'ala kept on adding more to him. So he had he had a, once he had fully functioning body and very and his his mind and intellect, it became it was perfected. So this was the time when he could add things to, to himself if he wanted to. Uh, and, and surely he wants to, but he thinks that he's now in control. So after that prime youth, he should be able to add more to himself and take him much higher. But alas, that is the time when the journey after the peak journey to, to, to decline begins. So rather than being able to add anything to him, He's not even able to retain that which Allah Azza wa had granted to him. His body begins to, to weaken. The flesh and the bones begin to weaken. The mind begins to weaken. He's not able to remember as much as he previously was able to. So everything, all his energy begins to, to weaken and then the strengths. So he's not even able to preserve himself, let alone adding anything to himself. So this is the nature of human being. That for as long as he was weak and vulnerable, Allah Ta'ala kept on giving him. And once he thought that he was in control, Allah Ta'ala started taking away from him and he was not able to, 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 to resist that. So, man, man, mankind are not even able to maintain themselves, let alone creating any other species. And all these species are created by the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. And subhanAllah, just like the just like the, uh, the 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 planets in the in the in space they do not they, they do not collide with one another these 8.7 million species are able to to live side by side on on earth and their needs are mutually met and they're able to to support one another and that that life on earth continues in in a, in, a, in, a, in the most beautiful, beautiful manner until man human beings they start spoiling it and they start creating disorder Another sign of the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, His creation is the, is the, is the winds blowing to different directions. So that is the seventh sign of Allah's Tawheed. وَتَصْرِيفِ الْرِيَاحِ How the winds blow to different directions. Easterly wind, westerly wind. And then as a result of this movement of winds, Allah Azza wa Jal creates seasons. And through those seasons, life, the, the variety, the colors are added to life. So the life does not become dull and boring. It can be, man, mankind is able to enjoy life because of tasrif al riyah the direction, the direction of the winds, which Allah Taala is, which is purely and solely in the hands of Allah Azza wa Jal. Nobody, no one else is able to make winds blow to to any of the directions. So the movement of the winds is in the hands of the in the, in the hands of the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, and and it's done in a perfect manner where. Well, which which adds as, as we said seasons to to, to 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 our climate and this is a bestowment of the Almighty Allah. Now this is the eighth sign of Tawheed mentioned in this ayah. And the clouds that are controlled between the heavens and the earth. Now these are tanks of water that where the water is 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 stored and again hundreds of thousands of tons of water is stored there and which which floats between the heaven and the earth and that these are in the, in the form of clouds and this storing yani tanks are created the, the tanks for the water storage are created by the almighty allah Azza wa Jal. man is not able to to to, to do to do that and the water stays there for as long as allah Azza wa Jal wills this is there in that are signs for people who possess intellect and people who are able to reason so eight signs of Tawheed are mentioned in this ayah. Now, well, I tried to briefly touch upon bits, briefly touch upon bits, but those, uh, the, if you try and delve deeper into it, there's plenty to be discovered in this ayah. There's plenty to be discovered in this ayah. Even the way, even the way the Almighty Allah Azza wa has talked about the, the way, uh, yani the eight signs are listed. It starts from 
خلق السماوات والأرض and ends with الصحاب المسخر بين السماء والأرض the clouds that that are that that, that are between the earth and their control between the earth and between and, and, the, and the heavens the way that the list is drawn if you think about it even there are lessons in in the way the list is drawn the list list is mentioned here the way these signs are listed and that is something for you to think about for for, for, for as, as your at, at your own time subhanallah the marvels and the wonders of allah's creation are included in this ayah 164. so naturally as a result of this what should happen is that human beings should try and build some kind of desire to move closer to to the creator of the heavens and the earth the being who has who possesses such any yani, such might and such power and this is because human beings the way allah Ta'ala has created them is that it is in their nature in their dna to have uh, have desire to 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 move to to acquire or or to have this love for anything that is beautiful and anything that is that carries uh, as i said jamal and kamal jamal is that the beauty and kamal is uh, something is it's a type it's a, it's a power is perfection so allah by, by nature human beings uh, have this desire to be to, to be inclined towards that which possesses beauty and which is which is perfect so allah in terms of beauty there's no nothing beyond him and in terms of kamal there's nothing beyond allah azza wa dal. So people having recognized the Creator from amongst people who recognize Allah Azza wa Jal and who, who, who get to know Him, then their love for the Almighty Allah is, is beyond comparison. And that's what's praised in, 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 this, in the subsequent ayah, 165. Wamin and Nas, and amongst people are such that take, that make, and min dunillahi and they they make equals other than Allah Azza wa Jal, besides Allah Azza wa Jal, they made equals yuhibbunahum ka hubbillah. They love them just like loving the Almighty Allah. Just as Allah Azza wa Jal should be loved. Walladheena amanu, whereas those who believed, they are ashaddu hubban lillah. They are stronger in terms of love for Allah. Walaw ya walladheena zalamu. If those who were unfair, those who are wrong, if they could see, if they were able to see the moment, if that moment is their own al-adab, when they will see the punishment with the eyes. So if at this moment in time, these people could see in the future, that moment when they will come across the adab, then they would recognize جميعاً, that the might and the power in its entirety belongs to Allah. Then they would be convinced that surely Allah is most severe, Allah Azrael is of severe punishment. Is the barra al We'll talk about that short, in, uh, shortly, inshallah. Women and Nas may take the windu lahi and dada. In this ayah, shirk and people who commit shirk, they are criticized and they are condemned. That you've looked at the might and the creating power of the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. Yet amongst people there are such who do who are guilty of shirk and who take in worship other than Allah Azza wa Jal. And they consider others that have created nothing and that cannot nowhere near match they can match the the the, the, the power and the might of Allah Azza wa Jal. Yet it is their foolishness that they consider other consider others to be equal unto Allah Azza wa Jal. And as a result of that, because they're so deluded that they love them, these equals, these false, the, 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 the acclaimed partners with Allah, they shower upon them that love which should have been given to Allah Azza wa Jal. So he, as, as by nature, they should have, they, they had this, this, this thing that Allah Ta'ala has created amongst human, in, in human beings is that they have desire to and and they have they, they, they just have this crave to be associated with perfection and to be associated with with something that is appealing and that is attractive so this natural desire that they have in them it should have been directed towards allah as, as a result of that their love should have been directed to allah because allah is the one who's described in 100 and, ayah 164 
the signs of Allah Azza wa and His might is mentioned briefly there. So <clears throat> their their emotions they should have been the 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 the. the, the they should have been directed towards Allah Azza wa Jal, but those emotions, because their minds are deluded, because they do not recognize Allah Azza wa Jal, because they do not uh, understand Him properly. So, as, as a, the result of that jahl and that ignorance, the outcome of that <coughs> is that what naturally belonged to Allah Azza wa Jal, they give it away to someone else. What was that? That, that naturally which belonged to Allah? That was their crave and their mahabbat and their this firm emotional bond. With Allah Azza wa Jal. So rather than so rather than giving it to Allah, they are giving it to someone else. So this is their zulm. Something that belongs to Allah, they're giving it away to someone else. Again, it stems from their jahl, it stems from their ignorance. amanu, those who believe, Ashaddu Hubban Lillah, they are more stronger in terms of love, their love for Allah Azza wa Jal. So their love for Allah Azza wa Jal is strong, their love for Allah Azza wa Jal is is such that nothing can match. So, so they have committed zulm that rather than giving mahabbat to Allah Azza wa Jal, they gave that mahabbat to the to the false deities that considered to be equal to Allah. So now, since they've committed this zulm, now let, let, let us let us make them one. Let, let us make them think. When you worship someone as Lord and when you worship someone as God, because He is the Mighty. He helps you at time of need. So when you are surrounded, surrounded by difficulty, He comes and rescues you. So these are out, out, out of all those moments where man is when man would be in need of help is the greatest mo the greatest moment is the moment when man will be standing to to face the consequence of his worldly conduct. That is the day of judgment. So on the day of judgment, man will be most vulnerable and in greatest need. So where will be these false deities that they worship? On that day, these false deities will not be able to rescue them. So on that day, these people will, will see with their clear eyes that the power in its entirety belongs to Allah and that Allah Azza wa Jal, His punishment is severe and His punishment cannot be taken lightly. Is the barra alladina tubiru? So they have worshipped false deities other than uh, uh, other, other than Allah. But these false deities at that moment, when these people will be in greatest need of being receiving help from them, rather than helping them, is the barra alladina tubiru min alladina tabaru. That will be the moment when the those who were followed will disown the followers. Is the barra when this the barra they will claim their barra the the, 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 any they'll disassociate themselves they will uh, distance themselves they'll they'll, they'll declare uh, any any claim of association to be null and void so when this this will be coming from those who were followed so they, they follow isa alayhi salam they, they worship him but isa alayhi salam will say they, they i have nothing to do with their worship they worship suns and the moons and the stars and their suns and the, the sun and the moons and the stars they will clearly disown the 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 the, the, the worshippers. So it's the barra those who were followed, they'll disown the followers. I mean from those that had followed them, Adab. And now these they will see the ones that are mentioned in the preceding ayah. These zalims would see the punishment and all their hopes. And all their relationships will be cut off and will be will, will be severed. So there will not be any asbab and any any relations and any link or any hope. It will just it'll, it'll dash and they'll they, they will have nothing will be fruitful. So the links that these are claiming to, to form with the false deities, they will not be fruitful. Because the false deities will disown them at that at that moment when they'll be in greatest need of their help. So in that extreme despair, they will then start cursing themselves and they'll say, Waqala and, and those who followed, since they would be disowned, those who followed, they will say, If we could, if we had a chance, if we could go back, 
then if we could go back to 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 to, to earthly life we will then disown you we will disown them just like they have disowned us today at the time of seeing the adab so allah ta'ala on that day the foolish they say that the the, the truth will be that the reality will have to be will prove itself so this reality that that all quwwat belongs to allah and this reality that wa ilahukum ilahu wahid that your lord is one lord this reality will will be witnessed and it'll be proven it'll prove itself when these people will stand facing allah when they'll they'll be stand before allah azza wa jal and these false deities will disown them and that at that moment they'll say if Allah could send us back to earth, we will disown you the way they, you have disowned us. We will disown those false deities as they have disowned us today. So this re reality will be recognized, but then it'll be too late. كَذَلِكَ دَسْ يُرِيهِمُ اللَّهُ أَعْمَالَهُمْ Allah will show them their a'mal, their deeds, حَسَرَاتٍ عَلَيْهِمْ as regrets upon them, وَمَا هُمْ بِخَارِجْنَ مِنَ النَّارِ and they will not be able to come out of the fire of Jahannam. They'll not be able to flee and run away from fire. So the, the shirk is condemned in this ayah, in, in these ayats. And it is taught, what we're taught here is that having recognized that Allah has think about the creation power, uh, power of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, and having understood that, love Allah Azza wa Jal, and people who are believers, people who have truly believed Allah and they've understood Allah, they love Allah Azza wa Jal in a manner that is matchless. Now, at this place, as, since we have two, there are two things here. Inna ma min al wal huda, ayah 159. And by chance, it is, it, it, it says, yani, we have happened to be discussing both. I thought that I'd give you a small demonstration of how those who who want mankind to go astray, how they try to put a cover on, on people's eyes and how they want people to be confused in regards to the truth. I was just, by chance, uh, while, while preparing for this lesson, I was checking and I came across this interesting example. This example that I'm going to play to you and I hope I can, I can I manage to do so, is a short huge clip from YouTube where uh, some scholar or I'll some the, some the academic seems to them. be arguing that islam is trying to put a, a cover on people's eyes and he's trying to confuse people and he's trying to argue in favor of uh the in favor of how christianity introduces god the almighty how isaiyat or nasraniyat how it introduces allah azza wa how it how yani how, how he explains the Almighty Allah as well to people. Let me share. Oh, yes. Am I not sharing? Okay, anyway. So what I'm going to do now is that share with you the, the this YouTube clip and let's see how it goes. Listen to the clip and then uh, what we'll try to do is if, if I'm able to share it with you, then we'll, then we'll look at the two verses here and see if you can la ilaha illallah let's listen to this first and then i'll try to explain to you nature of Allah. The, the number one difference between the nature of Allah and Islam and the nature of Yahweh and Christianity is that Allah is a unitarian God, which means uh, Muslims believe there is one God who exists as one person. Whereas in Christianity, we'd say that Yahweh is actually a Trinitarian God. There is one God who simultaneously exists as three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, now, this, this isn't, isn't just, just merely kind of an, an academic, academic, interestingly, you know, thing to thing note. To I, think I think it actually, actually has practical ramifications as well. well because uh, in, in Islam, Islam, they would, they would say, say that Allah is transcendent, transcendent okay? okay? And so and by so transcendent, means he is separate from his creation. creation. Now, now Yahweh, Yahweh is also transcendent. Yahweh is also separate from his creation. 
But because of the Trinitarian nature of Yahweh, he is also able to enter into creation and develop a relationship with his created beings. And this is a referring to the imminence of, of God, of, of Yahweh. Okay? So by being imminent, he is able to enter into creation. And so uh, I think this distinction between the Unitarian and Trinitarian God allows for this difference. And as a result, Christians and Muslims address and relate to God differently. So in Islam, uh, their, uh, their job, job is not, not to have a relationship with God, God, it's simply to, to obey, obey God. God. But in but Christianity, Christianity, as Christians, we not just, just obey God, God we, we also, also have, have a relationship with Him. So here, you listen to... Okay. You listen to this example of a scholar who is arguing that Islam does not encourage islam forces obedience upon its followers that they must obey the almighty allah but it does not really allow them to to build a bond with with allah whereas what you studied here what we looked at in, in the verses that we we studied today is that allah clearly says that he is loved by the believers Sadly, I think you weren't able to see the screens as, as I as, as I was going through the, the verses. Um, I thought I had shared the screen, but it seems that I, I hadn't. So I'll try and translate the, the ayat again. But this is the bit that I was referring to. Those who believe in Allah, those the believers, this referring to mu'mins, the, the Muslims, the followers of the Quran al Kareem, Ashaddu hubban lillah. The love for Allah Azza wa Jal is more strong than anyone else. And Allah Azza wa Jal is clearly encouraging Muslims to have love for Allah. The, the, Allah the, the Quran is saying that there is this emotional bond which, which only Allah deserves and which should only be formed with Allah. And this shouldn't be shared with anyone other than Allah. So that muhabbat with Allah Azza wa Jal, so the Quran is not only demanding obedience, the Quran is, encourage, is encouraging that there's a relationship, a loving relationship formed between the, the believers and between their creator. And Allah Azza wa Jal says that this is perfectly natural thing to happen after recognizing the creating power of the Almighty Allah. Inna fi khalq samawati wal ard, what was mentioned in ayah 164, so he says it's, it's a perfect natural outcome of, of that understanding that believers begin to love and, and build a bond of lo love and muhabbat with the creator. So and, so, and it's, it, 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 it's also saying that this reality will be recognized by the non-believers too, but it will be at a time when it'll be a bit late. So this this crime yaktumuna ma anzalna min al-bayyinat wal huda min ba'd ma bayyinnahu lin nas fi al-kitab that they are trying to put a cover in people's eyes in regards to that those clear signs and the hidayat that Allah has revealed this crime is cont continues to be to be committed and unnecessary tension and unnecessary controversies are are fanned in order to distract people so what we need to do is remain focused wa ilahukum ilahu wahid La ilaha illahu ar rahman ar rahim Your Lord is just one Lord, one God. There is no God except He, ar rahman ar rahim Since we missed the the presentation there, without there was an oversight again from my side. May Allah forgive me. I thought I was sharing the slides. Um, so let us go through at least the translation of the of the verses that are here. What you can do is because inshallah this this will be uploaded on YouTube. So if, if you can spend about, I think it's about 40 minutes that you'll have to, to spend to, to go through this. Um, have uh, have the Quran al with the translation open. Some of you are probably doing it already. If not, then have this website open or have the Quran al open and you'll, you'll be able to follow the verse again. So what we did here today after the break was That water which Allah Azza wa Jal sent down from the clouds, from the sky, thereby ahya bihil ard. He gave giving life to earth after after it after it becoming death after its death after it becoming dead Allah Azza wa Jal gives life to earth from the through the water that He sends down from the sky. Wabatha fiha and that Allah has dispersed in earth 
min kulli dabba, each types of creatures, moving creatures Allah Azza wa has created in it. Wa tasrif al riyah, and in directing of the winds, wa sahab al musakhar, and in the clouds, that is, remains controlled between the heaven and the earth, the ayatin, in that surely, in that are signs for people of men with reason, people that possess intellect. From amongst people, there are such who take under than equals other than Allah, the deities other than Allah, equal unto Him. They, they love Him, just Allah Azza wa is supposed to be loved. Those who believe, ashaddu, they are stronger in terms of muhabbat, in terms of love with Allah. If those who, who were unfair and those who were wrong, if they could see the moment when they'll see the adab, they'll know for sure that al quwa the strength in its entirety, belongs to Allah. And that Allah is the most severe of punishment. When those who were followed will disown their, their, their followers. And these followers will see, and all of them, the, the, just, the, they will all see, they, they, they would have seen the adab and the punishment, and the zalims from them, and, and, and any relationship between them would be severed and cut off. That is when those who followed will say, if we had a chance, if we could return, go back to earth, the way you have, uh, you, you have betrayed us, we will then disown you. We will disown them just like they disowned us on the Day of Judgment. So this will be, they'll admit, they'll accept the, the truth that was revealed in the Quran. They'll come to terms with it, but it'll be too late. Kadarik, this is how. Thus Allah Azza wa shows them, will show them their amal, their deeds. As a, as a source of regret for them. But this statement, disassociating uh, themselves from the false deities at that moment will not be of benefit to them. They will not be able to come out of fire because of that declaration and that disassociation the, uh, at, 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 at that time. So the Ya ayyuhun nasu kulu mimma fil ardi halalam tayyiba wa la tattabi'u khutuwat al shaytan. Now, people have this emotional bond with the false deities. And in order to please them in this dunya, they make huge sacrifices. Some of them fight for, for the false deities. Some of them sacrifice their lives for the false deities. Others observe long hours of fasting in order to please those false deities. And some even abandon certain pleasures of life in order to please those false deities. Allah Ta'ala says, None of it is beneficial. So if Allah, if you want to, if you want to observe fast to please Allah Azza wa Jal, then that is of benefit to you. But if you did that to please someone else, then there is no, there is no benefit in it. If you consider something to be haram, which Allah has made halal, and you think that by doing so you'd be getting extra reward, then this is not true. So whatever Allah Azza wa Jal has given to you as a halal and tayyib, lawful and pleasing and good. Ya Yuhannas, O people, kulu, eat and consume out of that which is on earth, which Allah has created for you, halalan, as long as it is lawful. If Allah has considered it to be halal, has declared it to be halal, if it is halal and you've earned it in a halal, in a lawful manner, and tayyiban, and in a, it's, it's, it's something that is pleasant, something that is good, then consume all that. This will not distance you from Allah. And do not follow the footsteps of shaitan. The footsteps of shaitan. Surely he is مبين, he is a clear enemy to you. Shaitan only commands you to do evil things and to do shameful things. And that you say about Allah Azza wa Jal that which you have no knowledge of. So the same, same theme that following consider uh, other false deities, this leads to certain people abandoning certain joys of life. Allah says, do not do that. So abandon anything that is halal in order to please anyone other than Allah or in a manner which Allah Azza wa has not 
mention as, 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 as a form of ibadat is not permissible. Someone stops taking honey and thinks that by not taking honey, he will get closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. This should this is not permissible. You can't do that. If you don't take honey because you're diabetic or you, for, for other reason, then that's perfectly fine. But if you do it as a form of ibadah, you abandon a jo certain joys of life because you think that this is ibadah, this is something that, something that pleases Allah Ta'ala, then such that, 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 that is haram, that is not permissible. We'll build on this inshallah next week from ayah 68, 69. We'll continue from this ayah next week inshallah. In the meantime, we have about five minutes left. So what I'm going to do now is go through the words, the five words which we the words that we hold on the Five words that we were meant to do last week and this week as well, inshallah. Last week, um, the task was to learn to look at this whole ayah. Look at the words that are there. Some of the words may have been covered before, um, others are not. But the whole ayah will just I've just broken down into the about all, all in all about 10 words. Some of them were covered before, others weren't. But this is from like this. Alladina. Alladina is a relative pronoun, which means those who. Alladina, those who. Usually after Alladina, you will find a whole sentence. Alladina qalu uh, inna, so whatever. Those who said something. So Alladina qala lahum nas inna nasa qad jama'u lakum. Those that, those who were told and then they reacted. So after alladina, usually you would have a whole sentence. This is a relative pronoun, which means those who. Iza means when. It's, it's iza is an adverb. When something happens. So iza, iza is a word which usually comes before fi'al um, mudari, something which is to happen in the future. Okay. So iza shamsu kubirat, when the when the when when the sun the, the the light of it will be uh, will will be taken will be extinguished will be covered or is the sama when the when the, when the heavens will will explode is the sama when something the the sama will be so about the day of judgment things that that will happen so these are things that are to happen in the future so is so is usually is mentioned before something that is to occur in the future, the future future occurrence. But إِذَا literally means when. أَصَابَ is a past tense. أص from أَصَابَ يُصِيبُ Something that that gets to someone. Someone that that, that touches someone. Someone that, that reaches something. So أَصَابَ usually it is uh, it is used with, 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 with some kind of some kind of uh, calamity, some kind of Pain, some kind of trouble, um, or, or or capturing someone. The literal meaning is, as mentioned there, reached or touched. Whom means they. It's a pronoun for masculine, um, plural, third person. Whom um, means those men, those people. But sometimes it's those people, which includes men and, and women both. So asabat whom they are touched by. They are captured by. Musibatun means an affliction. Musiba in many of the languages is used in the same same for, for the same meaning, particularly Urdu, Arabic, the same Musibatun. Qalu they said. Past tense from the from the word the source, the original letters of Qaf, Waw and Lam. Qawala or Qala. Qala is singular form. Qalu is plural form. Plural form. They said. Inna means surely we are inna it's not anna it is sh inna which means uh, it, it is it, it combines two 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 words here there's a word inna and there's a word na inna in essence is 
in in no and no. It's not in nana, but in na, the noons have been merged. So in na means surely we are. Surely we. So there's a there's a there's a letter of emphasis and there's a pronoun. So two things combined here: a letter of emphasis in na and uh, na, which is a pronoun, combined together, which means surely we are. Had it been just ana, which is written not very, ana is slightly different. Let's say here, all right, ana as well. Ana is different from um, inna. Ana is something like with alif maftuh. That's how ana is written. If you can see here, for ana, alif is has a zabr on it. If you, if that's a better word for you. Um, or has a fatha on it, so that is ana is different from inna. Inna is made of inna and na. Inna is letter of emphasis, which means definitely, surely, and na is us. Ana means I. Ana doesn't mean we. So don't do not confuse inna with ana. Ana means what singular first person, and inna is plural first person. If you if if, if you're okay with that terminology. Inna, we, surely we are, and ana means, without any emphasis whatsoever, just ana means I. Li means for. Li, uh, lahu, li, li has, li, li sometimes is used as majroor, i.e. maksur, sorry. Li, sometimes it's used with kasra, with zair, and sometimes it is also, particularly when it's preceded by a pronoun, then you would see li read as la. So the example uh, is lahum uh, or laka. Alam nashrah laka sadrak. So laka sometimes li can be can has can have zabar, but li or la, they they both are. Um, again, I, I hope that this is possible. This there's more detail to it. It is difficult for me to go into in the next two minutes. So I'll just say, I'll, I'll stop there. Li means for. Wow means and. Ilayhi is made of ila and he. Ila and he. Ila means towards and he is just like who. Um, ilayhi means towards him. In this case, towards Allah Azza wa Jal because lillahi, the word Allah was mentioned earlier. So what ilayhi, to ila means towards, to, and he means him. Ilayhi towards him. Raji'oon. Raji'oon is an adjective. Is ism mushtaq, ism fail comes from raja'a, uh, which means the doer of some raji'oon, people or a thing that is returning. Raji'oon is plural. The singular form is raji'a. Raji'oon, people or things that go back. People or things that return. So, Raji'oon, we are people that will go back towards Allah. We are things that will go back towards Him. Look at the translation of the whole ayah. Inna al -ladina. Those people who, when they are afflicted, when they are touched, when they are touched by an affliction, a musibah, they respond to that experience by saying, Alladina Kalu, they say, Inna, surely we are, we belong to, we are for Allah, i.e., we belong to Allah, and wa inna, and surely we are going to, we are returning back towards Him. So that is the first part, the, the verse, the, the five words from last week. Today's list of words contains these following words. Yattakhidu duna andadan amanu and ashaddu. Yattakhidu. The root words here are akhada, hamza, kha, and dal. Hamza is implied here. So from that, akhada or yattakhidu, uh, yat, means, yattakhidu means he makes for himself. He takes for himself. 
So Akhada Ya means he 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 takes, Yattahidu, he makes something, he takes something for himself. So Yattahidu Mindunillahi Andada, they take for themselves Andadan uh, other than Allah equals that are that, that they consider to be equal to for them equal to Allah. So they say that those false deities are equal as beneficial to us as Allah is. And that is a wrong claim. That is that that is a mistake. Duna means other than, besides, in exception of, more than. So that is duna, other than Allah Azza wa Andadan. Andadan or andad is a plural of niddun. The partner, the equals. So it is a plural of niddun. If you can. Niddun means with the kasra of noon. Niddun. Niddun means someone that is equal, some, some, someone that is same as, someone that is a partner. Ah, manu, they believed. Just like qalu is past tense, wow at the end is the pronoun of plural. Ah, manu, qalu is the plural of amana. Amana, he believed, and amanu, they believed. Ashaddu is an elative noun, you know what you can say it? Someone that is more than shadid, more than strong. So ashad, someone, someone stronger, someone harsher, severer. That is the meaning of ashad. So these are the five words for today and the five words from last week. If you want me to go through the go over these words next week again, please feel free and ask me to do so. Inshallah, I'll try and do that. Until then, um, I would say, which we will, will conclude the class. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Now, I have a few questions here. If you stay with me, I'll try and answer them. Shtef Quran to follow. Okay. Which ayat is this? There is still no screen sharing. La hawla wa la Wrong setting. Got it now. Okay, alhamdulillah. I was looking at ayat number. I'll close that screen now. Let me just one, give me one second. Try and give you the ayat number. I think it was I 165, I think. Yes, we started. Yes, 164. Um, the second part of it. So I 164, then I 165, and we, we finished at I 169. Okay, so I 164 until, in fact, we started our lesson today from I 158. And we finished at 169. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.